All righty. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining the Small Business Boot Camp uh, for this Thursday, April 29th. We're excited to have everybody with us. I'm Robert Theobald, Small Business Ombudsman and Vice President of Small Business Services here at the Arizona Commerce Authority. I want to start by thanking everyone for joining us and thank our community partners. We could not do these presentations, these boot camp sessions without our community partners, their help, their support, their expertise. Um, we appreciate them very much. So the Small Business Bootcamp and Resource Collective is designed to help small businesses work through the COVID crisis. Uh, it is a statewide initiative supported by our community partners, and it is a boot camp, a resource collective, and a content library. So on our Small Business Bootcamp webpage, you can find both bootcamp upcoming sessions to register and see what we've got going on. You have the resource, resource collective. And then down at the bottom, you have the archive, which is the content library. And the archive has all the previous sessions that we've done. We've recorded almost all of them. I think there's three that we haven't been able to record, uh, but uh, the rest are on there. So it creates a giant content library with expert uh, training and, and information. So it's a, a great uh, website to bookmark and save so you can access the upcoming content and the previous content. The Resource Collective is a great tool uh, that contains the guides and resources that our community partners have shared with us. This is just a sample list of some of those resources that are available to you. Um, unemployment insurance, safe retail, manufacturing, construction, etc. There's a lot of great information on this page. Additionally, the Arizona Commerce Authority has a COVID-19 Arizona Business Resources website. And on this website, you can find business guidance topics. We have a dedicated webpage for financial programs uh, that contains a list of the current grants and, and loan programs that are out there to help support small businesses. Uh, throughout the state. So it's also a great, uh, great resource to be aware of. Additionally, the ACA has a number of programs that uh, help small businesses. Our small business services helps businesses work with the SBA or work with the SBDC, which is a small business development centers, or SCORE, which is another no cost uh, SBA supported program. Uh, work with community partners such as our presenter today with Prestamos, uh, local banking contacts, lenders, etc. Our workforce division helps work with businesses to hire new employees if they're looking to hire and grow their, their workforce. And they also have training programs for their existing workforce uh, to train and upskill their employees. Additionally, our Manufacturing Extension Partnership, Arizona MEP, can help manufacturers throughout the state with their programs, their operations, anything from A to Z uh, with manufacturing, Arizona MEP can help with that. And then we have our small business checklist. For those who are looking to start uh, a business, start a side gig, uh, their own small business, expand a, a product line, we have our small business checklist. And this is an online interactive resource that helps with the licensing and registration and compliance questions you may have for the local, state, and federal levels when starting a business. Uh, it is a great resource to go through as you're looking to start uh, to give you an idea of where to go and who to check with. And the last website I want to touch on is the state's COVID-19 information and resource page, ArizonaTogether.org. Uh, you can find a lot of great COVID-related information here as well. So with that, I want to touch on some updates. The Shuttered Venue Operators Grant has reopened. Um, if you're one of these operations that uh, can apply for this, you know that the portal opened and then was shut down and it has now reopened, it's been open for a few days. And so uh, they are accepting those applications for the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant. Additionally, we also, you may have received an email from us yesterday uh, talking about the COVID related tax credits for paid leave that the IRS uh, send some guidance out about uh, this link we will share in the chat uh, so you can access it but uh, there's been some new programs to help with tax credits for paid leave related to COVID-19 
uh, also to help your employees be able to get out and get the vaccination shots if that's something that they're wanting to do or you want them to do and uh, to allow them to get the time to do that. Additionally, we have the Restaurant Revitalization Fund. Now we got some information. This link is to the SBA's webpage for that program. And then additionally, we have a boot camp session tomorrow, a special session, and we'll touch on that here in a bit. But some key dates for the Restaurant Revitalization Fund is tomorrow, April 30th, you can start registering for the program. And then on Monday, May 3rd, the application portal opens. Uh, so if you have a restaurant or know somebody with a restaurant or food service, it can be a food truck, it can be a concession stand, uh, if they're selling food, there's a chance they can get, they can participate in this program and they need to be looking at it because there's a lot of opportunity and the, the funding will probably go very quickly. So looking at some upcoming sessions, today we've got our Take Your Accounting Online with Amber Cordoba. We're excited about this session. Amber and I have been talking about it for a long time. And so we're glad to have it on the books and have it finally come up. Tomorrow we have a special session on the restaurant funding, um, the restaurant revitalization fund. So please uh, let all your food service friends know about this special boot camp tomorrow. We have the SBA will be on with us along with the Arizona Restaurant Association. And one of the really cool things that the SBA has done for this program is partnered with the payment providers that a lot of restaurants use. And one of those is Square. And so we have a representative from Square coming on to talk about how their program with the SBA works to access this funding program. So it's gonna be a really good session. And then next week, we have a two-part series. So we're really excited about this. If you're interested in podcasts, if you listen to podcasts and you think they might help your business or you don't know if they will, join us for this two-part series on podcasting. Uh, we've got um, Andre Jones from Octavia Media, who's been with us before uh, multiple pot, uh, boot camp sessions. He will be doing these two sessions and helping businesses explore their marketing opportunities and growing their business through podcasting. So we're really excited about that session. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and turn the time over to Amber and uh, let her get started for today's bootcamp. Hello, good morning. Thank you. Thank you everybody for joining us today. I'm gonna to go ahead and share my screen. My name is Amber Cordoba and I'm with Cristamo CDFI. We're a mission-driven lender and technical assistance or business advising um, provider here in the Valley and also in Nevada. Um, my background is in accounting, bookkeeping, financials. Um, so I'm gonna talk to you today about taking your accounting online. We'll go through a couple of different softwares and I guess I can go to the for discussion tab. Um, so why accounting and bookkeeping is, is so important and how online systems can help. Um, we'll look at four different accounting systems. So we're going to look at QuickBooks Online, FreshBooks, Wave Financial, and Xero. Um, we'll talk about the features of each program, the pros and cons. We'll talk about pricing and then a Q&A session and just things to consider as you're looking at taking your accounting online or switching to a different type of provider. There are way more than four online accounting systems out there. I just chose four that were kind of really popular and had a lot of information about them. Um, but the most important thing is really to think about the needs of your individual business and selecting something that's going to work for you and the way that you do business. Um, so the importance of bookkeeping, I think these are things that everybody kind of knows, but a lot of times we forget and I don't know any that really likes accounting or likes bookkeeping, except for maybe accountants. Um, so it's one of those things that's a part of your business that if you have to do it yourself can be a struggle if it's not something you enjoy doing. Um, but bookkeeping is important because it helps you understand your profitability in your business. So what's the bottom line? Are you profitable or not? It allows you to make sound management decisions. Um, so it can help you determine if your pricing structure is correct, are your expenses under control? I've worked with a lot of clients and small businesses that don't regularly track their bookkeeping 
<clears throat> and when they generate their first profit and loss, they realize that there are certain areas of expenditures that are just out of control and they didn't even realize that they were spending so much in that category. So it is a good tool to make sure that you're managing your expenses, you're managing the costs associated with delivering your product or service. And it can also help you understand hours of operation and staffing um, and how that can fit into your business operations. Using a, an accounting system as opposed to doing the old school, you know, paper on a ledger or um, even something like Excel, um, it's a, it allows you to compare periods against one another. Um, that's really been very topical with the PPP because in order to be eligible for a second draw, you need to be able to compare quarter against quarter. It also can tell you, you know, last year where your sales or expenses were, if you've made any changes. Um, you need financials in order to prepare for tax time so that you can give it to your tax preparer so they can prepare your tax return. So instead of waiting until the end of the year and pulling out that shoebox of receipts, if you are managing your bookkeeping throughout the year, it's much easier to have everything ready to go when tax time comes and get your taxes expedited. Um, to generate financial documents for loans, grants, and other uh, capital needs, which again is really important right now, you need to have taxes, you need to have profit and loss, you need to understand your business finances in order to be able to get access to the Paycheck Protection Program or the IDLE Program or the Restaurant Revitalization Fund. But also, um, if you're going to be applying for a loan, you're going to need, you know, for debt, you're going to need to provide historical data through profit and loss statements and where you're at currently. So it's important to be able to have that on a regular basis and then also to monitor your cash flow and see where your cash flow is at. So the first we're going to talk about today is QuickBooks Online. Um, in full disclosure, QuickBooks has been my favorite and I'm a QuickBooks Pro advisor. However, uh, QuickBooks does not work for everybody or does not fit everybody's business needs. Um, I think it's the most robust of the online, but you know, we'll talk about a couple of different today and we'll look at pricing and you know, I encourage you to do the free trials and take a test run of any of these softwares if you're interested, just to make sure that you like the way it looks, it feels, and it's something that you're actually going to implement into your business. The most important thing is selecting something that you're actually going to use. So QuickBooks Online, some of the nice features is that it automates tasks for you. You can create recurring invoices. Um, so if you bill the same amount every single month to your clients or customers, you can automate bill payments and also set up payment reminders. So there's a lot of automation tools that once you set them up, they just continually remind you and it, it, it saves a lot of time. You can easily sync your credit and bank accounts and automatically pull in all of the data. So you're not having to do data entry. You're basically just classifying transactions. There's a high level of reporting functionality, which is one of my favorite features. It allows you to pull really any kind of report and get any kind of data you want about your business operations. And then there's also electronic invoicing and you can create and um, email invoices and you can utilize that through Google accounts as well. There's also a lot of in integrations with other types of apps. There's timekeeping, there's inventory management, there's just tons of different types of apps. Intuit is a huge um, technology provider and, and they integrate really well. Um, they have a pretty easy to use mobile application. Um, what I tell people is if you don't really like doing your bookkeeping or don't make time for it, Download the app, and if you are, you know, waiting outside for your, your kids to get out of school, classify a couple transactions. If you're waiting in the waiting room at the doctor's office, classify a couple transactions. Not everybody has the luxury of having an in-house bookkeeper or the ability to outsource that. Um, so look for opportunities to, you know, kind of maximize your time with an online software that has a mobile app that can allow you to, you know, regularly keep classification. At the end of the year, if you have 1099 contractors, there's a really seamless 1099 generation right through QuickBooks that um, it tracks it all throughout the year. 
Um, and then they also have a really robust payroll and they also allow for vendor direct deposits. So you can do your direct deposits to both your employees and any vendors that you need to pay or 1099 contractors directly through QuickBooks. Some of the disadvantages of QuickBooks, um, they do have a 30 day trial, but it forfeits the three month 70% discount. So the way that QuickBooks typically works is if you sign up, they give you a couple of months of discount and the numbers of what they're giving always kind of fluctuates. Um, but if you do the, the trial, it will forfeit that. There is a sample account that we'll put in the chat that you can use to go and log on to and play with an actual QuickBooks file. Um, you can't damage it. It's just every time you close out, it completely resets, but it's a good way for you to get a feel for what QuickBooks looks like, the different features. Um, I think Faith maybe could put that in the, in the chat. Um, QuickBooks has a self-employment plan and then they have business plans. If you sign up for the self-employment plan, if you're just a, a solopreneur and maybe you want to track mileage, send out a couple invoices, you don't have a need for robust bookkeeping, that self-employment plan is really nice, but it won't upgrade to a business plan if you do expand your business plan later. So that is a huge disadvantage because you'd have to restart a brand new file. Um, it does have a lot of robust features, so it could be confusing to those that aren't, you know, super comfortable with technology or that are new to the concept of, of bookkeeping. Um, if you have multiple companies, it does require an individual subscription for each, so that can get costly. Um, and you might have to upgrade to get some of the features that you want. Um, the basic plan can be kind of basic and you might find, oh, I need this functionality. So you might have to upgrade. So that can also add on some additional costs. Um, the pricing on here, it's just pretty much like everything. You have the basic, then you have the plus, then you have the advanced. A lot of it's based on users. So that's one of the considerations, how many users you're gonna have. I won't spend a lot of time here because I have a chart later on that compares all of the different applications or online softwares. This is just an overview of what the dashboard looks like. You can see in the majority of all of the online accounting softwares look really similar to one another. Accounting is kind of accounting. Um, the navigation is on the left hand side. You can customize your dashboard to show you what you what you want to see. Um, so this is just a, an idea of what QuickBooks looks like. And again, in the chat, we'll put um, the link to a test account that you can go on and take a look if you'd like. Okay, next we'll move on to the FreshBooks accounting software. Um, they have some really customizable invoicing um, that can be really nice. You can easily convert estimates and proposals over into invoices easily. So if you create estimates or you create proposals, they get approved and then you later need to turn them into an invoice. QuickBooks does that as well, but Fresh, FreshBooks has a nice robust um, invoicing op option. You can duplicate prior invoices. You can do discount and deposit features. Um, with both FreshBooks and QuickBooks, you can track when clients view the invoices, which is really nice. You can see if they've opened it, but just haven't paid you. So you can uh, follow up with a phone call and ask them if they had any questions about that, that invoice that they looked at at four o'clock. Um, and it does support multiple languages, which is really nice. Um, QuickBooks does not support, at last I knew, anything other than just English. Um, expense tracking, you can scan photo receipts and log them, and you can mark expenses billable so that you can attach them to invoices. So if you have to buy materials that are specific for a job that you're going to build a client for, or you have to outsource um, a 1099 contractor, and you want to bill that expense to the client, it's a really nice box that you can just check. And when you go to create the invoice, you can include that expense. Just like all of the online softwares, you can do online bank connections so that it automatically syncs up with bank and credit cards. It has some basic project management tools. Um, you can do time tracking. They have on-demand training webinars. Um, one of the disadvantages is that there's no inventory management. So if you do have inventory, that could be an area that you might have to do externally. 
if you're trying to consolidate and get kind of all of your systems into one easy to use system and inventory is something that's important for your business, then FreshBooks might not be a good option for you. QuickBooks does have an inventory and one of the others we're, we'll talk about does have inventory as well. Um, it does have limited template choices, so you can't make a lot of um, adjustments to your invoices and the way that it looks and feels. So if the, the branding and the way that it looks is important to you, there's not a lot of functionality there. If you do download the app, you can't generate any reports. So if you need an on-the-go on report, you won't be able to see that from the app. Um, it's geared towards small businesses that are mostly service-based, so that makes sense why it doesn't have that inventory component. Um, if you do have payroll, you would have to use Gusto, um, and a third-party payroll provider. They do integrate, but you would have to get your subscription with Gusto as well. Again, they have a light plan, a plus plan, and a premium plan that's based on the number of clients that you have. So if you are a, a small business that just has a few clients up to five, the light plan could work for you. If you have a lot of clients that you're gonna bill, then you would look at the premium plan. Um, they also have, and all of the, at least QuickBooks and FreshBooks, you can do a select type plan or a premium type plan where you get some more dedicated um, assistance. FreshBooks actually gives you a dedicated account manager if you bill out more than 150,000 annually and you have 500 or more clients. You also have to pay $10 per month for additional users. So if you need more than one user, that could be a consideration when it comes to cost. And this is just an idea of what the dashboard looks like. Again, the navigation is on the left-hand side. Everything's kind of broken up into clients and sales, payments, any expenditures that you have, um, time tracking projects. You can customize your dashboard to show you what you wanna see when you log in. So that's a nice feature of, of any of these. Wave Financial um, or Wave Apps is free completely free. So it costs nothing. Um, anything that's free does come with its limitations because you get what you pay for. Um, it does have invoicing capabilities where you can set up recurring billing, automatic payment reminders, and your estimates and quotes can also convert into invoices. So that can be a time-saving feature. There are bank feed connections and credit card connections. And you can also expense your receipts um, only on the app. So if you download the app, you're out and about, you have a receipt, you can take a, a picture of it and store it. Um, so that's a nice feature. Pretty much all of your online accounting has an app functionality where you can store receipts as well. You can have unlimited collaborators. So whether that's partners, employees, or accountants. So if you do have a lot of people that need access to your online accounting system, this could be really nice because it's it's a cost savings. A, it's free, and B, you don't have to pay for additional users. If you have multiple companies, it's a really easy switch between the multiple companies. Uh, the disadvantage is you can't do any billable hour tracking. Um, you cannot attach expenses to the invoices. There's no inventory or purchase order functionality. You cannot depreciate anything and it's email only support. So again, when I say that you get what you pay for, um, you do have limited functionality. So Wave apps might be good for a more service-based as opposed to somebody selling a product. But again, it's free. Um, here is what the dashboard looks like. Again, navigation on the left-hand side, pretty easy navigation and the Dashboard, customizable, you can see, you know, banking, credit card accounts, cash flow. These all kind of are, are pretty similar in their, their look and feel. Next up is, I don't know if it's zero or hero, but um, invoicing, you can convert quotes and estimates to invoices, just like the other programs, um, automatic recurring invoicing. And these are all important things to consider again because they are time-saving features that can really help you to um, streamline efficiencies and it really makes your invoicing easier. 
I don't know about you guys, but I've definitely put off invoicing because I just don't want to sit down and create invoices and spend time doing bookkeeping. Um, so it, it can really save a lot of time to create those automated if you have recurring um, options. You can auto import, again, the bank and credit card data into the system. So it makes for easy bank reconciliations. Um, this program is very mobile friendly, whether you use a Mac, PC, tablet, or smartphone, um, and their app is pretty robust. It does have inventory management where you can track your real-time inventory, and you can also identify your best-selling and most profitable items through the system. So that can be a really nice feature for those that sell product. Uh, disadvantages are the limited customization. Well, I guess that's the only disadvantage I had. <laughs> Um, again, you have early, growing, and established. Um, the early plan is only going to allow you to do very little. The growing plan allows you for unlimited invoices, bills, and bank transactions. Um, and the established plan allows you to have multiple currencies and expense management and project tracking. Um, Dashboard on this one is a little bit different. The navigation is up on the top as opposed to the side. But again, you've got the different um, reports that you can customize what you want to see on your dashboard. Um, so I did a comparison of the pricing. So you can look at you know, what fits into your budget from a financial standpoint. Obviously, if you don't have a lot of room in your budget, you might want to start out using WAVE if you're not using anything. Um, all, all of these have a free trial where you can try it out for 30 days. I would recommend if you are really looking to move your bookkeeping online that you do a trial for anyone that you're interested in, get kind of a feel for it, see how you like the system. Because again, the most important thing is that you select something that's gonna meet the needs of your business and that you're actually gonna use. I'm sure everybody has a ton of different subscriptions that you use uh, or that, that you pay for every month that you don't actually use. You don't want your online accounting system to turn into another one of those you know, random software subscriptions that you just pay for every month. Um, a lot of it also is going to be based around the number of users that you need to have access. Um, so that's another consideration and some of them, it can be a little bit costly. All of these have options to integrate credit card processing as well. So you can accept credit cards as part of your invoicing process. The rate is pretty similar between all of the different platforms. Um, so there's really not a huge, you know, cost differentiation. I would say that if you run a ton of transactions, then maybe look at QuickBooks because it's five cents cheaper per transaction. The majority of these also allow you to pay electronically or your customers to pay electronically. So they can send, you can send out the invoice and they can choose to pay through their bank account and just put in their routing and account information it's typically a lot cheaper or even free for that to happen. QuickBooks used to be free, but they did just institute a 1% charge. Um, I know within QuickBooks, you can also pass that cost on by adding it as a line in your invoice. You should be able to do that with any other invoice. So if you're gonna be accepting credit cards and you do wanna pass that cost on, you would just add it as additional fee or, or line on the invoice. Um, all four of these options have a mobile application, which makes it nice and easy to use on the go. Or again, if you're, if you're waiting, sitting and waiting, spend uh, five minutes just classifying your transactions within your accounting software, and it makes it easier to manage as opposed to having to sit down and do it all at once. And all of these options have um, integrations to add in different features. And it's nice to look at the different types of integrations because that can streamline and make things easier for you. It can automate a lot of things, which can save you time and allow you to focus on your actual business operations instead of that backend administrative function. Um, so that might be something to consider if you do wanna have access to integrations. So when you're looking at what type of online software you want to use, you want to really think about what does your business need? Do you just need to see what your income and expenses are? Um, are you service-based and you really don't need any additional 
information or any other details? Do you need a full accounting suite that's going to allow you to track inventory, um, create invoice or create estimates and proposals? Do you need payroll functionality? Um, and do you need that mobile friendly functionality? So this is important to consider whether you choose one of these four options or you use one of the other options that's out there. And there is no shortage of online accounting software. Um, so I, I, you know, take a look at other stuff that's out there. There's Peachtree, there's Sage, um, tons of other different things. Um, how many users need access? Do you have employees that need access? Do you have contractors? Do you have accountants? The majority of the softwares will allow, allow you to add an accountant or bookkeeper for free. You can also control access with some of them. I know that with QuickBooks, you can set up permissions for people to see certain things. Sometimes we want people to be able to just create an invoice, but not be able to pull any reports because we don't want them to see that bottom line or have access to the payroll module. So that's one of the things that you want to consider. Um, for contractors that need to track time or bill, you know, do they need access to your program as well? So just things to consider. And also think about who's going to manage the books, who's going to be the person that's going to be responsible for the data entry, for reconciling your bank accounts, for the day-to-day -day operation of the bookkeeping, and involve them in the decision to bring online accounting into your small business or to make a switch. Um, it's important that that person feels comfortable with the software and um, that they're actually, again, going to use it. So consider who's going to do that and what functionality they need in order to be successful. And with that, we're done a little bit early. We can go ahead and move into Q&A. I see that there's some, some questions that have come up and some chats. Um, the question is, I need to improve my bookkeeping skills. I've done a search and several companies provide classes. Is there a specific company or program that you would recommend that I take to improve my skills? Um, so we through Prestamos actually do a wide variety of one-on-one -on -one technical assistance and consulting. Um, it's free, it's sponsored in part by the Small Business Administration. So we can work with you. We also do a lot of different types of classes. So it really kind of depends on your, you know, what your needs are and how you prefer to learn. Um, but I could put my information in the chat and you can reach out to me and that's something we can help with. Robert, I don't know if you have any other resources specifically around bookkeeping training. Um, sometimes the community colleges have classes that you can take around basic bookkeeping. Um, I know a lot of those, as you mentioned, a lot of those programs, those companies have online stuff that they've created to help with their programs. LinkedIn Learning has some. Um, you just have to do some some search on that. We're going to be doing a a series of boot camps in the future. They're not on the on the website yet, but uh, towards the end of March and end of March and the early June, we're going to do a four part series in conjunction with the small business development centers on really business financials and, and walking through financial statements, cash flow and other things. So that may help as well. Um, and so, you know, there are, there are programs out there. You're just gonna have to search and find the, the delivery method that's best for you. Um, I think one of the most important things when you're looking at increasing your bookkeeping skills is understanding that there's a difference between basic un, um, accounting fundamentals and understanding that and being able to use a QuickBooks or a, a FreshBooks software. So you can use the software and that's the more technology piece, um, but it is important to also understand on the back end why you're making those decisions and those basic accounting concepts. So it is good to get accounting fundamentals in conjunction with using the technology to be really successful. Um, next question. We use QuickBooks online. You use payroll, direct deposit, and everything in QuickBooks. You've had issues with the QuickBooks bookkeepers. Is this common? Do you have any other suggestions? Um, so Sean, yeah, the QuickBooks 
payroll, or I'm sorry, the QuickBooks accounting or QuickBooks bookkeepers is kind of a newer thing. There's another company out there called Bench that does the same thing. I'm not familiar with it. I haven't used them before, but you know, it is a nice feature from the standpoint that if you don't want to do all your own bookkeeping, you can contract it out. It's essentially contracting it out to another company to do it for you. I'm not sure if they outsource it or the quality of the people that they have doing the work. So that might be where some of the quality control issues you have are coming from. It does seem like a nice feature because you're already using QuickBooks and they're familiar with QuickBooks. So they would be able to do your bookkeeping for you. Um, I would recommend if you don't like that, you can also ask them to switch the bookkeeper that is working on your account, or if it's multiple people working on your account and that just doesn't work for you. You might look at something like Bench, or if you go onto the QuickBooks Pro Advisor website, you can find somebody that's local to you in your area that does bookkeeping that might be a better fit for you because you can interact with them more regularly and ask them questions. So that might be something you want to look at is getting somebody dedicated that isn't directly through the QuickBooks bookkeeping, but that is its own independent QuickBooks Pro Advisor. You know, with that, Amber, one thing that's real important is if you're using somebody else that's not part of your business and may not be as familiar with your business uh, to do the bookkeeping piece, to make sure when you're sending invoices and receipts and things to them that they know what account they're supposed to go into. Um, and that's where your chart of accounts, you know, is a very important because if the bookkeeper doesn't, isn't real familiar with your business, they're going to look at a receipt and be like, I don't know where that goes. And they may just pick a spot and put it there. And then you'll have to go back and fix it later. And it can create a lot of double work. So if those are the types of problems you're having, it may be just helping educate them on your business and where some of those typical expenses may end up and need to be classified as. Yeah, absolutely. I always tell people that just because you have a bookkeeper doesn't mean you don't need to be involved in your books. You need to look at your reporting. You need to have conversations and at least meet with your bookkeeper or accountant on a quarterly basis, if not monthly. I would be asking for a monthly set of financials and I would take a look at them. I would compare them against previous periods. And I would make sure you have open conversations with your bookkeeper or accountant to make sure they understand the way that you do business and the way that you operate so that they are classifying things correctly. The bookkeeping that you do and your financial statements lead directly to what goes on your business tax return. So you really wanna make sure that that information is, is correct and classified correctly as Robert mentioned. Um, and as somebody that's done bookkeeping in the past, I can tell you, Sometimes when people have hundreds of transactions that go through a month, you have to make your best guess about what, what it's supposed to be tied to. Um, another big tip is avoid commingling your personal and business expenses if at all possible. I definitely had clients that I've worked with in the past that just use their business debit card for everything. And it's really just a nightmare when you're trying to reconcile and figure out what is a business expense, what's a personal expense, what can be written off, what can't. Um, so have those conversations and be actively engaged with your bookkeeper, whoever's managing your books. Looks like Shauna is asking specifically about QuickBooks interfacing with PayPal. Yes, QuickBooks does inter interface with PayPal. Um, in terms of other accounting software that have that, I'm not 100% sure, but I would imagine that the majority of them can work with PayPal. If you go to Google and you search the name of the accounting software and PayPal, it'll uh, probably automatically tell you whether or not it does. If using PayPal is important to you, then that's one of the considerations you need to look at when you're choosing an online software. Um, what happened here? Okay. Um, would you recommend Bench? You're still waiting for your 2020 year end books. Um, again, Bench is similar to the QuickBooks bookkeeping where there's probably a lot of people that work in not necessarily a call center, but we're kind of behind the scenes working on a variety of different accounts. 
I'm not sure if you get assigned an account manager, you have multiple people that, that work on your books. I'm not sure what the turnover looks like. So anytime you're using an online bookkeeper, those are some of the things that you, you might run into. So if you are having a lot of problems getting the information that you need, you might wanna consider working with somebody that's local or that you can have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with as opposed to a software provider. Um, so that might be something that works better for you. You know, Bench or the QuickBooks bookkeeping system um, program might work really well for some businesses and might not for others. I would say if you're still waiting for your 2020 year end books, depending on when you gave all the information, we're at the end of April, It's that seems a little unreasonable. Um, I think Bench really touts themselves on providing monthly reconciliations and really your bookkeeper should be providing monthly reconciliations and um, profit and loss statements, balance statements for you to look at. Um, so that's something that you might wanna consider is just going local. It sounds like that might meet your needs a little bit better. How does a small business find the right accountant? This is um, one of the million dollar questions. Um, Everybody that I talk to always seems to be unhappy with <laughs> their bookkeeper or accountant. I would, two things. One is anybody can call themselves a bookkeeper or accountant. It doesn't mean that they have any kind of professional training or designation. Um, a CPA is required to have a master's and go through a CPA exam and do continuing education. You do not need a CPA to do your day-to-day -day bookkeeping, and you probably couldn't afford it either because they're typically $200 plus an hour. Um, a bookkeeper is probably somewhere around $30 to $50 an hour, depending on their experience level. Um, so those are some of the things you want to take into consideration. What are their credentials? What experience do they have? I often tell people to ask other small business owners that they know who they use for bookkeeping and how they do their bookkeeping. If they're happy, is the bookkeeper or accountant that they're using somebody that's timely? Do they provide monthly reports? How responsive are they if they ask questions? Also interview a couple of different bookkeepers or accountants and ask them questions. Get a feel for what your relationship will be like. You don't want to work with somebody that every time you ask them a question, they, you know, make you feel dumb for asking that question. Sometimes that can happen within, you know, the, the accounting industry because, you know, it's, it's very systematic. So pick somebody that you're going to have a good relationship with, that you feel comfortable asking questions, that you trust because this person has access to all of your financial data. And they are making decisions about how things are classified, about what your financial reports look like. So you want to make sure that you can trust them. And you also want to make sure that you're, you know, regularly reviewing the work that they're doing so that you don't run into a situation where somebody might be doing something incorrectly or, you know, doing fraud. That does happen. Um, but the best source is probably asking other small businesses especially those that are in your industry, who they use, who they like, how they do their bookkeeping. And that can give you a really great, great start. Um, if you would like to work with our company, um, Prestamo CDFI, you can go to uh, prestamosloans.org and you should see programs and then you'll see the prime program. I can also put a link in the chat. Um, you can set up a time um, to get enrolled in the program and all of the one-on-one -on -one work that we do is no cost, um, just so you know. Okay. Typically a small business has to depend on a team of experts as you're learning on your own journey who help with bookkeeping and accounting and taxes. Do you have any advice on how you make sure all of these parties are on the same page if you work with two different entities? That's a really great um, question. Typically, a business might have somebody that works in their company that does something like your invoicing or paying bills or processing your payroll, so one small portion. Then you might also have a bookkeeper that does the bank reconciliations or that you know cleans up everything. 
And then you might have your accountant, CPA, and or your tax preparer that are all different people. I would say that making sure that everybody has an introduction and in the very beginning have an introductory meeting where everybody gets introduced, the roles are clearly defined on who is gonna be doing what. Um, make sure there's an open line of communication, maybe a quarterly, you know, a quick quarterly check-in with everybody for 15, 20 minutes and you can go over the financials, how things are working, if there's any issues, but really make sure you keep that, that team with open communication Otherwise, what happens is, you know, things can start slipping through the cracks, they can be done incorrectly. And a lot of times people make assumptions that others are doing things that they're not. Um, so really setting those clear boundaries on who's doing what I think is a really important way to be successful as well. Sorry if you can hear my dog snoring in the background. <laughs> um, Kevin from the SBDC, hello, um, saying he's always found it very important to emphasize that these products are managerial accounting software packages. They're designed to allow the business user to make real-time decisions about their business. Are you spending enough or too much on marketing? What are your biggest returns coming from in the product or channel mix and what's happening to profitability or what's happening with the profitability. So again, that goes back to kind of some of those things in the beginning about why it's important to regularly look at your financials and make sure that um, you know, you're aware of what's going on in the finances, knowing that your bills are paid and that you've got a little money left over in the account at the end of the month and that your lights are on every day when you, you know, come into the business is not enough financial oversight for your business and it's not really informing you on all of the decisions you need to make. And I think we all learned over this last year that, you know, the amount of money that we make is not the only thing. The amount of profit that we bring in, it's also managing the expenses, managing our payroll and making business decisions about, does it make sense for us to be open until 12 o'clock at night, um, you know, and, and what our staffing needs to look like. Um, so just really important things to consider. Um, can you speak to if there are additional charges for when the money is actually made available in the bank account after the payments are made to the small business and any of these platforms? So is there a lag or delay in receiving funds in the bank account? Um, do these companies charge extra for making immediate real-time funds available? So that's a really good question. I know specifically with QuickBooks, you can pay a little bit of an extra fee to receive the funding in your account quicker, either same day or next day. That is an additional expense. And sometimes you need to pay that because you need that cash flow immediately. Um, the QuickBooks and any of the bank transfers probably take a couple of days for those funds to hit your account. If it's paid by credit card, it's normally a two or three day turnaround time. But for the majority of these, you can probably pay an additional fee to have it quicker. I know for a fact that you can with QuickBooks. That's something that you want to consider if you, you know, run into cash crunches sometimes, whether or not you can get your funds quicker. You can also do something like a cash discount for your clients to encourage them to pay you by check or cash quicker. So if they pay you within, you know, three to five business days, you can do a reduction of their invoice of a particular percentage. Something you're going to want to consider, though, is taking that into your, your cost of goods sold and what it costs for you to process your transactions. If you're going to take that extra hit to get the funds quicker, you want to make sure that you've built that in and accounted for that. And also maybe focus on reviewing your financials more regularly and having a better understanding of your payment cycle and how to manage the cash flow on a more regular and consistent basis so you don't have to have that something that's regular and, and cost you more. Um, I know that some of the banks like Desert Financial will allow you to go into an overdraft situation. Um, it does cost you, it's not an actual overdraft, but they extend you some credit. That's another option that you can look at as well. But again, the planning aspect and managing your financials on a more regular basis might help you to you know, get your cash flow in order so that you don't need something like that. 
Amber, did you see the question um, about DCAA compliance? I do not know the answer to that, but um, I can take a look and let you know if you want to email me, I can give you my email address and we can talk about it. Let me see if... Uh... And Amber's email address is on our screen right now. Um, so they're on the left-hand side for those that want to message her with questions. Oh, here's a... Um... DCAA compliant accounting softwares. It doesn't look like any of these are. I can send you a link and, and feel free to reach out to me and we can talk a little bit more about that. And if anybody has any specific questions about any of these softwares or any you know general bookkeeping type of questions, feel free to reach out to me and I can provide you additional resources. Um, you have multiple businesses structured under one umbrella company. Would each need their own separate book? How would these business divisions be mentioned when doing books for the main umbrella company? Thank you. Oh, I'm glad my voice is calming. Thank you. <laughs> um, in terms of the way that you structure, this might be something that you want to talk with your CPA or accountant or your tax preparer about because you want to set up your books so that it's easy to have the data you need in order to do your taxes at the end of the year. Now, if you have a couple of subsidiaries and you just blend everything together in the one tax return, you can probably get away with just doing one account. You also wanna consider what data you need in order to make effective decisions about each under, um, individual business. So if you've got a dog grooming business, for example, um, you might wanna keep the book separate if you have a, a cafe, um, I would highly recommend that because they're two different business types. They're gonna have different expenditures. They're gonna have different um, types of income that come through. So really, if you can, I would separate businesses, but that's something that you also wanna consider from a tax strategy standpoint of what's gonna make the most sense and maybe just get some advice from whoever prepares your taxes on what they think you should be doing. Um, and involve them in, in the process. You know, Amber, with that, I, I'm big in, I love looking at business analytics and the data to I understand how the business is operating. And if you have, you know, multiple businesses, you know, from the analytics side, it's very good to have them split up so you can look at which one's making the money for you, which one you're spending too much time in, and is it not making you the money? Um, and a lot of that can be done on the front end, getting everything set up right. And then it's just a matter of the proper putting in bookkeeping, putting in the right account, um, building it from the right spot. But I think there's significant benefits to having it separate um, so you can analyze your business in more detail, you know, as you need to. Yeah, I would absolutely agree with that. There's no such thing as too much data and too much detail. And it is an investment on the front end to get everything set up. But once you do it, once you get everything set up, you don't have to set it up again. It's just a matter of managing it. It makes the management easier. Um, one of the really nice things about QuickBooks is that as you start classifying transactions, you can set up rules. So if it's you know Circle K, you can tell the system that this is a fuel expense and it will always classify that as a fuel expense. Same thing if you do you know, automatic withdrawals for utilities or rent or any other things, you can automatically set, the, set those up and it'll automatically classify those transactions. So really over time, the more you use your systems and it's probably across the majority of online accounting systems, the more that you use them, the more customized and intuitive they become, the more they learn about your business operations through artificial intelligence, and the easier it is to do the day-to-day -day bookkeeping and, and managing of your, your accounting. So, um, you know, the more you use them and the more you invest on the front end, and sometimes it can seem like, man, I don't have the time or desire to do this. You can also outsource that to somebody like a QuickBooks Pro Advisor that 
they do that. They set up the accounts, they work on your chart of accounts and they get it all set up for you for a fee and then you just manage it moving forward. Um, so there's a lot of considerations and really just think about what your business needs, what's gonna be successful for the long-term for you. And, and again, I always come back to what are you actually gonna use and follow through with? Don't just let this be another subscription that you pay for every month without, without actually utilizing it because it's a really important part of your, your business operations. Um, I think there was one more question about the programs or classes to improve your skills. Um, if you, if you want to learn more about accounting in general, so you understand the accounting concepts, then you might want to look at a community college class, or there's a ton of different videos and resources about basic accounting online that you can look at. I know that QuickBooks does workshops where there are two or three days and you can learn about bookkeeping fundamentals. Um, Robert mentioned that they're going to be doing some financial literacy type stuff with the SBDC coming up. We're doing a webinar next week on understanding how to create a, a financial statement, a profit and loss statement from scratch. That's good information to know so that you understand what's actually happening when you're creating your financials. Um, there's a lot of resources, especially within, you know, our Phoenix small business advising community on understanding basic financial you know, aspects. So I would encourage you to either reach out to me, reach out to Robert, reach out to Women's Business Center, Small Business Development Centers um, to get more information on what classes you can take as well. And you can feel free to email me if you need more information. Excellent. Well, that puts us right about at time. That was a great way to end up. Um, Amber, thank you very much for the presentation today. A lot of good information. Uh, thank all the attendees for your great questions. Uh, we had some really good questions on there, so we appreciate those very much. Um, so with that, again, this session is recorded, so if you want to go back and look at it, we will post it later today, along with Amber's slide deck, um, so you can review that information. Uh, a reminder of tomorrow with our uh, the Restaurant Revitalization Fund special boot camp session. Uh, 9 a.m. You can register for that on our website, the Small Business Bootcamp website. Please let your friends know if you know somebody has a restaurant, food service business, food truck, et cetera. Uh, please invite them, share that with them so they can uh, get the information they need to take advantage of that grant program that's available. So with that, uh, we will wish everyone a great day. Thank you for joining us. Uh, have a good day. Enjoy the, the great weather. And we will see you tomorrow or next Tuesday. Thanks. Thank you.